Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Pemirsa Ilham TV yang dirahmati Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Bagaimana kabarnya? Semoga baik-baik saja. Pada kesempatan kali ini kita akan menyaksikan sebuah video kisah mualaf seorang wanita asal Amerika yang menceritakan bagaimana awal mulanya ia menjadi seorang muslimah. Padahal sebelumnya beliau ini termasuk orang yang sangat islamofobia, ya, sangat fobia dengan Islam karena begitu gencarnya propaganda media barat tentang apa? menceritakan tentang keburukan Islam. Islam itu dicitrakan sangat buruk sekali, sangat kejam dan lain sebagainya. Namun alhamdulillah Allah memberikan hidayah kepada wanita ini semoga Allah memberikan keistiqamahan pada beliau. Baiklah langsung saja kita simak bagaimana kisah beliau. Kita simak video berikut ini. So, I would like to begin by asking you where and when were you born? I was born here in Muncie, Indiana in 1986. How was it growing up in the late 1980s, early 90s in Muncie? Um, so I grew up in a Christian family here in Muncie. Um, and later reverted um, in my late 20s um, to Islam. Growing up here, um, what's your typical, you know, um, life? I uh, was raised by two parents. I have two sisters and a brother. Um, we attended local schools here in town and got to see um, a lot of the changes that Muncie has made over the years. Can you tell me about... Uh your parents more, like their names, occupations, their influence on you? Uh, yes, my father's name is James, and my mother is Sharon. They both um, work in the industry field, and um, I take many things from my parents. Um, my stubbornness definitely comes from my dad, um, which is a proud notion of his. And then, um, You know, my mom also um, taught me to be very vocal about my feelings. Uh, how did uh, religion shape family practices and your values? Um, so when I um, was growing up, we were expected to go to church every Sunday um, and to, you know, attend church. Outside of that, though, um, at home we didn't practice as much as as we probably should have. Um, outwardly, we were, you know, a very Christian family, um, but behind closed doors, it was a bit different. Um, my parents divorced when I was a teenager um, after many years of um, issues between them. Um, later on in life, when I reverted to Islam, uh, it wasn't met with a great support from family. Growing up in a um, Baptist family, um, Islam was not an option to discuss, yet alone to believe in. Um, so that caused a lot of family division. Uh, do you remember which uh, church your family attended? We went to several churches over the years. Um, Grace Baptist was uh, the one that we attended growing up. Did you attend any uh, religious education, like Sunday school? We did, yes. Uh, during church services, as well as um, all holidays, were part of you know church functions for us. Do you remember anything from those experiences? Um, yeah, we used to go to Bible school a lot. Um, as I became older, um, I became a youth leader at um, the church that we attended at the time and was then put in charge of Bible school. So all the years of going to Bible school, you know, um, really helped to shape that year for me. Were, uh, when you were long, younger, uh, was there someone you looked up to as a role model? Yes, my grandma. Um, she passed away when I was younger, um, but her lessons that she taught us continued even after she passed away. Um, she died of cancer when I was in my early teens. Um, and I can remember her, even the day before she passed away, having us read the Bible to her. That was something that she still wanted all the time. Even though she was losing all functions, um, her faith never shifted. 
Uh, can you tell me about uh, your uh, grandparents and the influence of their religious convictions? Yes, uh, my grandfather was Catholic um, growing up and he married a Baptist woman. Um, so Catholic became the dirty word of the family. Uh, you weren't allowed to say it. My uh, grandfather no longer went to mass. Um, he continued um, with the Baptist uh, denomination with my grandma until he passed away. Can you also uh, tell me about your schooling, about elementary school, middle school, high school, what that experience was yes. like? Uh, so I went to one of the county schools here in town or well, outside of town, um, Westell. So literally a very small high school in the middle of a cornfield. Um, so was very much raised to be a hometown girl here in Muncie. Before uh, converting to Islam, uh, do you remember when you started to question your faith? I did. Um, so I'm a mother of three and my youngest daughter, Brylin, um, was getting sick a lot and we were having surgeries. And at that time, your, t your faith really comes into play and it's tested. And for those who aren't very strong in faith, it's very hard to deal with it and to get through that. Um, I prayed a lot and I just, I didn't feel the fulfillment anymore in my prayers. And so for me, it was a moment when I realized that I myself didn't believe enough um, what I was taught growing up. And so it really took me on a spiritual journey for several years. Um, it wasn't directly focused on Islam at first. Um, it was just a spiritual journey to find that hope and fulfillment that I needed. Um, and I wanted to give to my children as well. And so after um, a few years, um, we uh, got a new pediatrician who um, you could tell was a foreigner by the name. And in our family, we were raised to only have white male doctors. It was just kind of how it was. Um, but he had openings and we really needed to get into a new pediatrician. Um, my daughter's pediatrician had just moved. So I set up the appointment with him, thinking that eventually we would change as soon as another doctor had openings. And before we went to the appointment, um, I can remember telling my daughter to not say anything about the way that he spoke or the way he looked, um, because for me, I just assumed he was going to talk differently. And in walked the doctor who spoke perfect English, no accent, you know, was detected. And my daughter was giving him pictures that she had, you know, drawn while we were waiting and came up to me at the end of the appointment and uh, told me that, you know, mommy, he doesn't sound different at all, where everyone in the room obviously could hear as children would do. Um, <laughs> so it was quite embarrassing for me and also a, a realization that I myself had become very judgmental. Um, started to, you know, really um, debate with him things as far as her treatment and what we were going to do. A lot of it, I relied on my teachings growing up, um, which was that we didn't really do a lot of medicine. Um, if God wanted you to, to be healed, you would through enough prayer and conviction. Um, so I started to kind of let him know that I didn't really want to take the medication route. I didn't want to do many more surgeries. And he asked me why. Um, and so I, you know, told him that's how we were raised, but then he further asked why, and I, I couldn't answer that question. Um, so that started more of, you know, a, I guess you would say a deeper journey for me. I wanted to understand why I was taught these things and, and why that's what my family believed. And so when I went to my mom to ask her some of these questions, um, she couldn't give me an answer. It was just, this is how we have been taught. And uh, I got in touch with um, an amazing woman who was part of the um, Ahmadiyya Muslim. And we started to talk and we became very close. Um, she's now my spiritual mother. And from there, I went to my first um, meeting, started to learn you know, more about um, deeper knowledge of Islam. At that point, my knowledge was still pretty bland. 
And, um, and the more that I read and the more that I learned, the more fulfilled I felt. And my prayers became deeper for me. And so that really was a highlight in my journey. Going back a little, uh, what were your thoughts about Muslims and Islam before you met this doctor? Um, before, you know, I was, I don't want to say the average American, but um, like many Americans, um, I let the news make up my mind, um, which can be rather scary at times. Um, without outwardly knowing it, I would say I was a closet Islamophobic um, person here. You know, I would I would deter my children from from you know getting too close. Um, there was that fear that I had, a very ignorant fear um, that was based on lack of knowledge and understanding. Demikian tadi kisah malam yang telah kita saksikan bersama. Semoga semoga menginspirasi kita semuanya. Sekiranya video ini bermanfaat bagi anda, silakan untuk klik like, share, dan subscribe channel Inang TV. Sampai jumpa pada video berikutnya. InsyaAllah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.